Today, I'm going to show you how you can use a new free AI coding assistant in VS Code and keep your code 100% local. And you can use free open source models that are capable of giving you as good or even better results than you may be getting from a Copilot subscription. So if an AI code assistant can deliver this much for free, it's earned instant Chad status. I want to guide you through this in 10 minutes or less, so let's get right to it. We need to start today at olama.com. Now note, you need to download this for whatever operating system you have. It's available for Mac, Linux, or Windows. Windows is a preview. So when I click on the download link, you can see it says Windows Preview. That's what I'm using today. But for Mac OS, it's not a preview. And for Linux, it's ready to go too. So whichever you need, download and install that now. Okay, you should now have Olama downloaded and installed. Now I've got VS Code open right now, and I'm going to open up a terminal window with control in the back tick. Now I will tell Tell you on Windows, since it's a preview, I had to restart my Windows machine before it would recognize Olama at the command line. So you may have to do that if you're on Windows as well. Now just to verify your installation, type Olama and then dash dash help and it should recognize it. If it doesn't or say it says it can't find the word Olama, restart your computer and then try it once again. Okay, you should have Olama installed and you verified that. Now I'm looking at the Eval Plus leaderboard here and you can see base tests on the right and the Eval Plus tests on the left. And these are for the free open source models and some paid models as well. It's comparing all of them. We can see here, just looking in the top five, there's Code Quinn at number five. Just above that here in the Eval Plus test is GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo. Then there's DeepSeek Coder V2. And then finally, another GPT-4 Turbo as of April 2024 here at the very top. Now I'm making this video in June, so I don't know the next time they'll update this leaderboard, but you can keep checking back. Now I'm going to use CodeQuinn. It's very close to these others. You could also use DeepSeek Coder VT, V2 as well, or you could use these paid models, but I'm going to use CodeQuinn and I'll show you why. Let's go back to Olama on that page and we can search models here. So I'm going to search for CodeQuinn and we should be able to pull that up. There is Quinn 2, that's not what I want. Find CodeQuinn, there it is. And now that we've got CodeQuinn pulled up, notice the size over here, it's 4.2 gigs. That's a pretty good size download. But if we go back and say we wanted to go up to that other one that was ranked a little higher, DeepSeek Coder-V2, let's go ahead and click that. Now we can see it's 8.9 gigs. So I went with the smaller one and I've been happy with that. Of course, you can use any model that you want to. So right now, I'll just show you CodeQuinn once again. And I'll click that, and here it gives you the command to run at the command line, Olama run CodeQuinn. So you can just copy that, go back to your terminal in VS Code, and run that with Olama. It will take a while to download because it's not that small. It's 4.2 gigs, but still half the size of the DeepSeek version that was also available. Let's make the tutorial official and roll that footage. And now we're going to add the continue extension to VS Code. This is at continue.dev, but we'll just search it up in VS Code. You can see it's also available for JetBrains, but it is the leading open source AI code assistant, and you can use these free open source models with it. Okay, we're back in VS Code. Now let's go ahead and click on the extensions icon over here. And when you do that, you wanna search for continue. Now we'll pull up the continue extension. Once we click on that, now I've had it installed before, so I hope it has the same behavior when I reinstall it. I'll go ahead and install that now. It shouldn't take too long. And once I have that, let's go ahead and close that out. And now we'll hide that as well. And we should be able to open continue from this menu. If you have a little more room, you may see the icon. I'm just going to click continue here from the three dots. And it's opened up a chat session, so you may not see that at first. I am not for sure, because what I saw at first was a splash screen. Let me click this. Yeah, it's not giving me the splash screen. It's just giving me the continue. So we have Olama installed. It's going to have a couple of recommendations for you on the splash screen that we actually don't want. So you can go ahead and skip those. What you do want to do is go ahead and click the configure continue to bring up your JSON config. Now inside of here, you notice it's got models listed. It defaults to Llama 3, but then over here, when we have our window open, you can choose 
code Quinn. That's what we want here. And it just, that's under the auto detect. Then if I go ahead and hide that window as well, you can see here it's got custom commands. I'll press Alt Z to wrap that down. So there's a custom command in here for test. If we type test into the chat, it's instantly going to use this prompt with the AI model. And when you come down to tab autocomplete model, at first yours won't say code Quinn in here. So notice I put in code Quinn for the title and code Quinn for the model. So it's going to use code Quinn for the tab autocomplete. Let's go ahead and add one more custom command. So I'm just going to select this and do shift alt and the down arrow. And then I need to put a comma after the first custom command. I'm going to call this one step and I'm going to say uh, explain the code that is selected here, you have the selected code. I'll say explain the selected code step by step. That's all I really want to do. So it gives me steps if I want it to explain anything. And then the description is, I'll just say code explanation. And that's all I need. So all I'll need to do is highlight some code and put step into the chat and it will explain it. Oh, I should get rid of my typo. Explain the selected code step by step. There we go. Now let's try all of this out in the chat window. I'm going to quickly open the file tree over here. Now I've got a Python project, but I'm going to create a JavaScript file at first. I'll say convert to my SQL timestamp.js. So kind of a specific title there, but now I'll open the chat window by clicking the continue icon, or if it's not there, click the three dots and find it. And now I'm going to give it some specific instructions here inside of this chat. I'll say, well, what I can do is actually it says control I to generate code. So let's hide that. And I've got control I. Now I'm on Windows, it might be command I, but here I can write the instructions. So I'm going to say, write a function that accepts a JavaScript date as a parameter and returns a MySQL timestamp. Press enter, let's see what it generates. Here is the code and it's generating it out piece by piece here. Now that looks pretty good. So we could chat about this code as well. So this is the code, I could highlight this and now I can do control L, command L if you're on Mac or Linux and it's got all of the code in here and now I can say, would this be more efficient if you used two ISO string. Let's see what it says here after we get our reply. It's taking just a moment and I'll scroll down. Here it all is. It says, no, it would not necessarily be more efficient. It gives a full explanation here. It says using two ISO string would also convert the date into a different string format. And it has the T and the Z, but it's less flexible. So a good conversation there, chatting about the code itself. So now I'll say, can you write the function with to ISO string? So here's the example. Now it's going to give us a different function than what we had over here. And let's say we like that after it gives us the full description. So we can come back up here to the top of this and it says apply to current file. I'll just click that. And now it's putting that over here instead of the code we had. And if I quickly hide the chat window, we can see it a little bit better. But here is the new function. Now I'd have to go through. It also gave some example usage at the bottom. Of course, you don't want to just trust AI. You want to check it all out and see maybe you could do something different. Okay, I've got a new Python file now and I'm going to use control I once again and let's see what it can really do. So I'll say write a Python REST API using fast API and SQL alchemy. And let's see what it generates. Now I may not stick around to show all of this, but it's interesting that it might be able to crank out an entire program for us. And then of course we could look through it and see what we like, what we want to change, but it sure seems helpful. And it seems like it's every bit as efficient as GitHub Copilot. Hey, I hope that helped you guys set this all up. I'm going to write a blog post about this too, and I'll leave links to everything about this video tutorial in the description. Most of my videos are based on your requests, so be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see in my upcoming videos. A quick thank you to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider. Dad is a senior. And my junior patrons, Programming Polyglot, Tim, Philippe, 
Morgan, Isaac, Will, Ernie, Scott, Stacy, Philip, Abe, Javier, Michael, Alexi, you're helping me reach my goals. Thank you. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it has exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week. I'll put a link to it in the video description, so please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day. And let's write more code together very soon.